everyone. In today's video, I'm just going to go through how you would go about conducting the sign test. So first off, it's important to know when we actually use the sign test. So you'd use the sign test when you're looking for a difference rather than an association. You'd also use the sign test when the repeated measures design has been used. So this is just where the same participant provides both sets of data. And you would also use the sign test when nominal data has been used. Now I'm just going to introduce you to our experiment. This experiment consisted of 10 participants who were taking part in a weight loss program. These 10 participants provided their weight before the diet and then their weight after the diet. Our hypothesis is that there will be a difference in weight before and after the program. It's important to note that this is a two-tailed hypothesis, so I didn't directly say how the weight would change, I just said that there would be a weight change. If a question were to ask you to create a set of hypotheses, it's important to note that this would be an experimental hypothesis. You may also want to create a null hypothesis, which would just simply say that there will be no difference in weight before and after the diet program. So once we have all of our data, the first thing to do is work out the difference between the two sets of data. So for example, the weight of the first participant before the program was 70, and after the program was 69. So that's a difference of minus one. And as I've stated here, you can just state whether it's a positive or a negative, as opposed to the actual number. So the first one, you could just say negative. You don't need to know the actual number. The only important thing is that we've got the signs correct. You may also find that in some cases, the number before and after are exactly the same. For this, you just put a difference of zero and we're going to ignore this one in later stages. The next stage is just to simply add up the total number of positives and to add up the total number of negatives. In this scenario, the total number of negatives is 6 and the positives is 2. And once again, I've just reiterated here that you should ignore any no differences, which are indicated with a 0. The next thing you need to do is assign your S and N values. So your S value, also known as your calculated value, is simply the least frequent sign. So our least frequent sign was the positive sign, and we only had two of these. So our S value in this case is two. And then your value for N isn't simply just the number of participants you had, because for this, what you need to do is ignore any no differences, which again were indicated by zeros. So for this, you can either just add up the positives and negatives, or you can take the number of participants and take away the number of no differences. Either way, you'll find that our n value is 8. This next step involves the use of a critical values table. You'll always be given the critical values table as it's different for each statistical test. So first of all, what you need to do is compare your s value, which in our case was 2, with the critical value. In order to find your critical value from the critical values table, you need to know a few things. First of all, you need to know whether or not your test was one-tailed or two-tailed. You also need to know the level of significance. In psychology, we always assume that this is 0.05 unless otherwise specified. And as I stated earlier on within the video, our hypothesis is two-tailed because we simply stated that there would be a difference in weight. Now that we know all of these factors, we can see from the critical values table that our critical value is zero. We also need to know that the calculated value of S must be equal to or less than the critical value in order to be significant. Usually this is given by the question, but just in case it doesn't, just try to remember this. So our calculated value of S was two, and we found that the critical value was zero. Therefore, because the value of two is higher than the value of zero, the difference between the participants' weights before and after the program is not significant. This is because our calculated value of S was not equal to or less than the critical value. And when you're given a question asking you to calculate if the sign test is significant, you would want to write your paragraph in a similar way to what I have here, just giving the value of S, the critical value, and then a quick summary paragraph just using the hypothesis. 
So as I've just included on screen here, you may also wish to include this method of writing whether or not your results are significant. So this just simply means the S value of 2 is greater than the critical value of 0 and therefore the results are not significant. If you were to go about writing this way, I would still include the English version of the write-up as well, just so that you're perfectly clear. And if you were to actually find that your results are significant, this method of writing would become S is less than the critical value. So I hope this video was useful in showing you how you might go about conducting the sign test and how you would go about writing up your results from the sign test. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below.